we will let everyone um, keep entering if anyone comes a little late. Victoria, did you want to welcome everyone before we get started? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you for your time. Uh, I know it's very special dates in, in the year, but thank you all. Thank you, our lecturers, Cara. Uh, thank you for your time and invitation and find a, a, a schedule for us on time. Uh, thank you, Erica and Denise, our coaches subcommittee. And thank you, Jimmy, our really great liaison. <laughs> and Betty, for sure, is always helping us in everything. Um, and thank you all the coaches. I know you are really interested in this area and I think it's a great opportunity. Cara, it's also part of the innovation group of Tina. So uh, thank you and all your questions are available and we are recording for the other judges or so, uh, sorry, coaches are not here. We can see and review all the information. And thank you again to be here. Cara, it's all yours. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah, thank just you. For, no, just if you have a question, write your hand or put in the chat. We we want to say take small breaks to to Cara to answer if you think you need to repeat something or something like that. Great. Thank you, Victoria. Yes. Please ask as many questions as you need to. This is what this is for, is to help ease your mind on the coach card and how to declare. And we're gonna do some fun exercises within here too that you're gonna help gain some confidence on doing a coach card. So welcome everyone. My name is Cara Heald. I am a member of the FINA Innovation Committee. That's when working on the new system. I am from Canada, so I'm proudly a Pan Am Aquatics member and I'm thrilled to represent us on the FINA Innovation Committee and um, build a really great system here for Pan Am Aquatics too. Um, I think we're ready to go and it's going to be amazing in 2023. So coaches, I do hope I can ease your mind today with the coach card for declaring your routine difficulty. This is the sheet or the card that will be the official document that you submit and that technical controllers will use to verify the difficulty. So today is my job to show you um, how the coach card works, the different parts, how to declare your routines. Uh, many of you may know this is very similar to other sports. So we're aligning with gymnastics and diving and figure skating with these planned program sheets and having to declare our difficulty. So it's new for us, but I think once you get the hang of it, you are going to be great. So as a coach, we have some amazing tools that you need to use. So it's essential that you understand the difficulty guide and the difficulty table. And I'm hoping these look really familiar to you now. Um, I highly recommend you print these out and have them with you. My table, my difficulty table is never a meter away from me right now. I travel with it. Um, it's always with me to help coaches and answer questions. Um, it's a nice two sheet page. I see a lot of coaches walking around with them and athletes too. Um, it is an essential tool to your coach toolbox now to help you with choreography as well as, as, well as declaring your difficulty. As well, we have on the acrobatic side, we'll be doing part two of this in our presentation um, this week as well. But these quick reference sheets are another um, tool that you should have with you. And again, I recommend printing them out. So that's going to help you code your acrobatics. Again, part two coming later this week. So don't worry too much about that today. Of course, um, also, FINA rules appendix three, which has your set number of elements for routines. This is also very important to understand and have as a resource. One page, print this one out. Um, it will know how many hybrids and acrobatics you're allowed to have in your routine. So it helps you set your plan, your routine framework. Again, this essential one page resource, it's, it's a checklist for you, for your routines. 
So also make sure you have this appendix three with you. So you know your limits on your coach card. So I know for everyone, the follow-up question is, where do I find all of this? Yes, that's nice, car. It's all on your screen, but where do I find these? So all of these tools are on either the FINA website, World Aquatics, or FINA Learning Platform. I know all of the new branding is coming out. So right in this presentation, which we will share with you, so don't worry about taking photos or screenshots, I've asked that this PDF of the presentation goes out, so you will have the live links within the presentation as well. So there are three main pages that have all the resources you need on the rules, coach card, video tutorials, et cetera, available to you where you can find anything. So these are the three links that you need. So here it is, here is a look at a filled out coach card. This is the same example that's in the difficulty guide. So as coaches, it's your job to fill out this coach card and then technical controllers will have this and will be verifying live when you do your routine, if you did what you declared. And that is really the technical controller's job is to look that you did what you declared, that's it. Your judges will be marking your execution and artistic impression. Technical controllers, it is not our job to look at execution. Our sole job is to look that if you said you did a certain thing with the code listed, did you do it? That's it. How well you did it is up to the judges to take care of. So what we're going to do is work through each part of the coach card. And I will say as the system proceeds and the federations are starting to work on this, as well as Swiss timing is building the scoring system, that the coach card will likely also be an online form that you will fill out. So they're taking this lovely form we created, the pencil and paper version or the fillable PDF, and they're creating an online version that will, you know, the magic of technology will take what you input and then merge it with the scoring system. So that's all being worked on right now to get ready. But for now, we have pencil and paper, your fillable PDF. So keep familiarizing yourself with it. Okay, so here is the coach card and the top part, part of it. So that is all for general information. And it is universal for all events. So there isn't a coach card for solo, another one for duet, another one for team. It's a universal form. So as you can see, you put your federation and even for federations around the country, I know here in Canada, we have a Canada one because we have clubs. We don't have federations. So we've just tweaked it a little bit. Uh, the competition you're co competing at, you know, whether it's international or just within your own region or country, you check if it's prelims or finals, you check uh, for the event you are entered, you enter your theme. So the theme is actually required for combo for you to declare your theme and free combination. But it's a great thing to have for announcers anyway, to have the theme of your routine. So you're gonna have to fill out your theme and then you fill out your athlete's names, whether it's solo duet or your team members. And then the next part of the card, we really get into where it happens. This is where you declare your difficulty. And this is where you detail all of your routine parts and your difficulty line by line. So we're going to go through it one by one. So as an important note, coaches take note of pages 16 to 17 in the difficulty guide. And that's where you'll find full explanations of everything, as well as example coach cards, okay? That kind of helps guide you through um, how to do a coach card and some of the rules about doing a coach card. So remember to take a look at that. So coaches, you must fill out your coach card by order of performance. So from top to bottom, from the first things you're doing, all the way down to the end of your routine chronologically, but also left to right by your hybrid components and in the order they're performed. 
in the declared difficulty cell. So I like to call this, it's really your routine storyboard. You're demonstrating perhaps a transition, then you have a hybrid, then you have a transition part again, then perhaps an acrobatic, et cetera, through your routine. So think about this as the coach card, as your routine storyboard. You wanna tell your story and all your parts to the technical controllers, as well as to the judges who are going to see at least what part is coming up in the routine so they can prepare themselves to mark you accurately. The coach card is important because if athletes do not perform their movements as declared on the coach card, then the following may occur. So you've probably heard some of this by now. In a hybrid, if by chance the athlete does not perform what they have declared, then base mark gets applied to that hybrid. In an acrobatic, if something happens that is different than what is declared, perhaps you said you were going to do two somersaults and you only did one, then that's a base mark situation. Technical required elements, this is the same as always. If Someone doesn't do the proper element, it is unfortunately a zero. We all know that that's serious and that's what happens with our technical required elements in tech routines. Some good news is if you make an error on your base mark in a hybrid, so your number of movements or time underwater, the technical controllers can fix it because essentially you need the base mark. You can't have no base mark. So that is, if you happen to make um, an error there, we make the adjustment and there is no penalty right now for doing them. So we kind of have a laugh because we think we're going to have t-shirts made that say this, but it's important to do what you declare. Okay. Make sure that what you're declaring on your coach card is what your athletes know to do. Uh, maybe this is more of a case with soloists, but improvisation will not work well in this new system if they decide to change a hybrid on the fly. So. Do what you declare. Um, if you can keep repeating that to your athletes, to fellow coaches, um, keep spreading the word. Just do what's on your coach card. And I'd like to note, coaches, we're all used to going to our judges to seek feedback on our routines. Um, you know, in the off season, when you're starting to build something and getting their feedback on execution or synchronization, um, how the flow of the routine works artistically. So now you have tech controllers as a resource too. So there's many tech controllers that have been trained around the world and the pool is going to be expanding, but you can use tech controllers just the way you use judges. Hey, can you look at my routine um, or a certain hybrid? I think it's an R4, you know, are you seeing that too, et cetera? So tech controllers are officials too. And outside of competition, you know, we take conflict of interest and ethics and all of that very seriously, just like judges. But if we're outside of the competition, tech controllers can also review a routine and give you feedback on clarity, check a coach card. There's going to be lots of support going into uh, this new season. We don't want coaches to be frightened. Um, we want to be able to check your coach cards, um, allow you to practice before a competition and make sure that uh, you feel comfortable and confident um, in your coach card. And we all know there's gonna be field of play errors. An athlete may forget something or something happens that just goes wrong. Um, but we don't want mistakes on the coach card. We essentially want you to get those right, really positive way with lots of support. Okay, onward we go, digging in here to the coach card. Okay, so in this first part is the um, time column. And that is where you write in the time, the chronological time in, in the music that the um, part is happening. We're not checking this as tech controllers. It just allows us to have um, a timeline of your routine. Okay, it may also allow us to call up video for review if we need to. If we need to check something, just gives us a timestamp. The next 
column is the part column. And this is where you detail what part it is. And there are just four different choices. Was it a hybrid, an acrobatic, a transition, or a technical required element, or TRE for short for tech routines? The next column is for your element number. And this is where you detail which number it is in the routine. This is aligned with our appendix three of the set numbers in routines. So you're going to want to make sure that you are aligned here, that the number of hybrids and acrobatics are aligned. So for example, in junior or senior free team, you should have seven hybrids and four acrobatics. So we should see numbers one to 11 on your team coach card. Okay, just as an example. So you would be numbering your hybrids and your acrobatics in this case. Okay. The next column is for the base mark. And this is for your number of movements and time underwater for a hybrid. Acrobatics, it will be detailing that it's an acro A, B, C, or D or P, sorry, and, um, or if it's acro pair for duets. And there is no base mark for technical required elements. So you just leave this blank, it doesn't exist. And here I've just cut out what's in the difficulty guide just for reference. Okay, so this is where you're looking to your difficulty guide and difficulty table and referring to those to fill out this part. All right, here's where things really, really get important, this declared difficulty cell. This is really kind of the meat and potatoes of your hybrid or your acrobatic. This is where you detail your declared difficulty using that um, hybrid table. Or if it's an acrobatic, this is where you put your full acrobatic code. It's very important that you declare the hybrid in the order it happens. You don't want to jumble um, that order. So for example, in this hybrid, they are telling me, the coach is telling me they're going to do an R1 first, a rotation level one, and then a T3, a thrust level three. And then there'll be more that follows, but you have to put things in the right order because your tech controller is watching. So they want to see things at one after the other as they happen in the hybrid and follow along. Remember, you want to make their job easy. You want to make it easy for them to check, check, check that you did everything that you declared. Again, I will say this probably 100 times in this presentation to use that hybrid table, have it with you at all times. Um, it really is your guiding star for um, the coach card. Next is the bonus column, and this is for hybrids only. So this is for any traveling, angles, placement, synchronization, and pattern change in a hybrid. Of note, different bonuses apply for different routines. So you may have heard this um, before. Traveling is for everyone. It's for solo duets and teams. Angles are only for duet and team. Solos do not have an angles bonus. Placement is for everyone. That's for a hybrid done within the last 20 seconds of your routine. Synchronization and pattern change are for teams only. So solo coach cards are quite simple to do. And as you progress in duet and team, they get more complex. Okay, again, using that table as your guide. The bonus column there is not for acrobatic bonuses. Okay, it is really, it is just for hybrids. Your declared difficulty of your acrobatic, which we'll be talking about in a couple days, um, is all declared in this declared difficulty um, column right here. And lastly, you have your DD column, and this is where you can add up and do a check on what your declared difficulty is. So for example, in this hybrid, we had number of movements one, and if you wanna follow along, if you have your hybrid table handy, 
that's a value of 0 0.05. Then time underwater two is 0.1. An R1 is 0.15. A T3 is 0.35. Our angles at 0 0.05. One pattern change simple at 0 0.1. So this simple hybrid is a 0.8 difficulty. And of course, we know hybrids can go much, much higher as you add in more difficulty, but you're just simply adding along. Um, I think this is a great way to just start to learn how it all works. Just do some simple math, add up, see how your difficulty adds up, and you're really going to start to get the hang of it as you do this. Here is an example of an acrobatic code with the difficulty in the DD column. A little note again, do not put a bonus, an acro bonus in the bonus column. It's all there. The acro code is packaged all as one that you will enter. And then I have an example as well of it as a technical required element. Okay. You just, there's no base mark, but you put in your declared difficulty which element you're doing. There's no bonus and you can just write in the DD and the DD just as appendix two tells us what it is for those tech elements. And lastly, the last, last column on the coach card is for the technical controller to just put a check mark if we're doing pencil and paper copy um, that they saw everything is declared. So at regional competitions at smaller meets, this may be just paper submitted coach cards that technical technical controllers are checking. And at the highest, highest level, this may be all digital on iPads and screens um, to be able to check everything. So that'll be exciting once we can show you how that all works. But for now, um, which is great about the system is it can just as easily be done with pencil and paper. All right, I'm going to pause. I know that was a lot of information, but next up, we're actually going to try some examples together. So I just wanted to ask, based on uh, the first 20 slides are slow, did anyone have uh, any questions about the coach card? If not, I will keep going. All right, good stuff. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, and we're going to do some fairly simple examples just to get us feeling more confident about our coach card. So I have a solo example. So this is participation. So what you're going to do is in the chat, I am going to put a solo example. And we are going to part by part, fill out uh, this solo coach card, at least the first five rows of the coach card. It's just the first lap, just about. So if you can open that YouTube link and watch, um, let, watch through to the end of the first hybrid. So I'll give you about two minutes to do that. And then be prepared to tell me what you saw. So we're gonna be the coach in this instance. This is our athlete. We're starting their coach card and we need to fill out, get started with the first five lines for them. So try and look and see what number of movements and time underwater you would declare. And then what difficulty would you declare for this hybrid and any bonuses? So hopefully you have your hybrid table with you. And we can all work together to fill it.
Okay, one more minute for that first hybrid. And don't worry about the time column. I'll do that part. <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds. All right, let's give it a whirl. Could anyone tell me what the first part would be? You can write it in the chat if you want. What did we see first? Was it a transition, a hybrid, an acrobatic, or a tech required element? Anyone? You can either say it out loud or you can write it in the chat. What part you saw? What did the athlete do first? Anyone? Anyone in the chat want to write who, uh, what part it was? Can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Okay, was it a transition or were they above the water doing anything? What actual component did the, did the athlete start with? I know they did a dive in. But if there wasn't anything at the surface, it's not um, hybrid. Good, Samantha. Yeah, the first part is a hybrid. And the time there was 7 to 19. What would we write in the element column? Yeah, you don't need, the first part is just the dive in. It is just the entry. Yep, there was nothing else there. Yep, good, Megan. Element number one. Does anyone have a guess at what the base mark would be? So it's a hybrid. So we know that it would be number of movements and time underwater, but what level? Good, I have an M2. And I actually had TU2 for that. I had that it was 13.5 seconds. So that would be a time underwater level two. No, that's okay, Megan, don't worry. That's what this is for. Um, how about declared difficulty? What did we see first? If everyone just go for it, don't worry if you're, if you're wrong, it doesn't matter. What did the athlete do first? I think they did a rot. So what what we we see here? They're ascending. Is anyone finding it in the table? Anyone see? Yes, good. And it was an airborne weight three. Megan, you are on a roll. Good, airborne weight three, what next? I like to call this, I think one of the most common codes we are going to see this year. There was a rotation. Mm 
Well, joining. Yes, good. R3. Good job. And then there was another rotation after. Yes, that's good. It was an R4. And there was one last thing at the end. One last movement. Yep, good. Airborne weight. Which level was it? It was similar to the beginning. Yep, it was another airborne weight three. And we know that with our rules in our hybrid table, this was really good because you can declare an airborne weight twice, a maximum of two times in a hybrid, and rotations level one to four, you can declare a maximum of twice. So good, that was a good hybrid. Um, and did anyone see any bonuses? What bonus could we declare in solo? What did this soloist do as far as a bonus? Right now, well, with the solo, we have a choice. Was there traveling or a placement? This definitely wasn't the last 20 seconds of the routine. But does anyone go for it? What do you think? Did they do a bonus? Do they deserve a bonus in this hybrid? Yep, yeah, good, traveling. So there was a traveling bonus and I will help us out. Um, and then we would need to fill in the DD. So if everyone grabs your calculators on this first one, you're gonna find as you practice doing this, it, it's gonna help you start to memorize your coach card and the, the codes and how much things are worth. So I know there's a 0.2 for base mark, airborne weight three, 0.3 plus 0.45 plus 0.55 plus 0.3 plus traveling. I get 195. Hopefully my math was correct on that one. Good. Good job. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. We're going to keep going. What do you think happens next? What usually happens for a after a hybrid? It's going to start to feel um, pretty simple, one of your parts of your routine. So after you do a hybrid, the soloist surfaces, and then what is that section all? Is that a hybrid, a transition, right? A technical, we're at a trans. Transition. Transition, this is all you need to write. It's so simple. That's it. Because it's not an element, no base mark, no declared difficulty. So next up, we are on to the next hybrid for this soloist. So go take a look. I'll give you two minutes. And then we will come back and do this hybrid.
All right, 30 more seconds. I'm going to keep us moving along. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance and you still can keep watching. So what do we think? What part was this? This next part. Did we have a hybrid, a technical required element or a transition? There's no acro in solo, so. And really, this is a free solo, so it's really only hybrid or transition. So what do we have here? Anyone can write in the chat. Yep, Megan. Good job. It's a hybrid. And what do we write in the element column? Two. Perfect. All right. How do we feel about base mark? Good. Okay, two. Yep, element column. And how number of movements, what level? These are gonna start, once you start seeing them, you're gonna have a, a feeling um, and know what levels they are because of how long. Yep, good, number of movements two, there were nine movements and oh, NM2 and time underwater. Good, two. So that was a number movement, same as the first one, actually. All right. What was the first um, big declared difficulty in that hybrid? What was the first thing we saw? I believe it was a thrust. Anyone want to try what level that was on the table? I believe it was a thrust with a spin 360. Close, yeah, T6. Did it have flexibility or was it just a rotation? Yeah, good, I'm seeing a T5. This one was a T5, good. Yeah, good, Megan. Yeah, it's a T5. What happened after that? Uh, what would be the next thing as this athlete's coach you would declare? Is there an ascent happening? Everyone see an ascent? There's little parts. Right, yeah, so the next one, I'll give you a little, an R4. I did not see an R4, but what I did see was an airborne weight three. And then there was a little bit of a swirl in there. And that would be an R1 for this hybrid. Did anyone see any bonuses? Was there, I guess our only choice here is traveling. Was there any traveling in this one? No, there was not. So with this hybrid, I'm sure you could figure out just by seeing it, it's probably a bit lower than our first hybrid. So again, we have a 0.2 for base mark. A T5 is 0.45 and an R1 is 0.15. So this hybrid was a 0 
All right, then of course there's some breathing going on, some artistic impression. So what's this next part? It's a solo, so it can only be one of two things. There we go, transition, good. And we have one more hybrid to do. So and we would put element number three here. So two minutes, go watch this next hybrid. It's a little bit of a longer one, but see if you can identify um, the difficulty and we will have finished the solo exercise. So two minutes and then we will come back. Okay, one more minute. Try and see if you can get the base mark and then see if you can find, I'll give you a clue that there are five different things to declare. That is a coach you could declare for this solo hybrid. Fifteen more seconds and then we'll get started. All right, let's go for it. Okay, who wants to go for uh, the base mark? It's different than the other two. That I can give you that hint. So what level number of movements um, would you declare for this hybrid? Good, Megan, yeah. And time underwater? Yeah, perfect. I had the same, I had 21 number, uh, 21 movements and 17.5 seconds. All right, what movement did we see first? First out of the five here. Good, perfect, T4, it was a thrust with flexibility. Then what came after? I believe there was an ascent. Anyone else can answer too. Megan and Rebecca are doing all the heavy lifting on this coach card. Coach Megan and Coach Rebecca. Yes. Thanks, Tammy. All right, what comes next after the airborne weight? We know with solos, we're gonna see lots of rotation. So I believe there was a rotation next. Yes, good, and R4. I will note, remember to look in that difficulty guide because for, um, free hybrids, it's number of rotations before your toes go under, different than required elements. Good, and then what came after that? It was an ascent and a spin. Yep, 
Yeah, it was an R3. And then what came last? So last, I think there was another a repetition of something we already saw in this hybrid. They did a second something. That was a nice, uh, which a good value. All right, I will fill in for this one. It was another R4. Yeah, good, Tammy, same. So an R4. And because of all these rotations, thrusting and rotations, there was not any bonuses. There was no traveling in here. But what's the problem? There are three rotations. We can only declare two. But this one here, our rotation level three, so that was our lowest rotation value. We know these rotation level fours are good. That's a 0.55 each. We want to keep those on there. So we did a spin up. So yes, it's an R3, but it's also a vertical ascent. So instead, we can declare an airborne weight three because really the value of an airborne weight of an ascending action is part of that spin up value. So we're just taking the 0.3 uh, out of the 0.45 essentially. So we can keep all our five declarations, even though there were three rotations. Now, remember, we're looking at a routine from the old system. Coaches are going to be strategic. That the smoke, They may need an airborne way three where you're turning a half turn to face a certain direction. Um, but you wouldn't have to. Um, you probably are packing something else in there to make sure you're getting value. So let's quickly do an add up. I have a feeling, I'm sure you do too, that this one's going to be the highest of the bunch. So a three and a three is 0.4. And then a T4 is 0.4. An airborne weight three is 0.3. Uh, an R4 is 0.55. Another airborne weight three is 0.3. And airborne weight, or sorry, rotation four is 0.55. I get 2.5. Hopefully someone verifies I did it right. But on the next page, I have my uh, answer key. So let's take a look. Yay. Here we go. Oh, 1.1. What did I miss on that one? There we go. So we have our answer key on there. Okay, with an explanation. So when you get uh, the presentation, you will be able to work it uh, out yourselves. And I'll delete off our work. And then you can use this presentation to help other people, which will be great. Anyone have any questions about the solo example? Feel free to turn your mic on and ask. I know we have about 10 minutes left. I do have a duet example and a team example, which I will leave for you to do um, on your own as an activity with the answer key within the PDF. But I want to take some opportunity to leave a few minutes um, for anyone to ask any questions or if you want to ask about anything you are experiencing in your routines that you'd like clarification on. So don't be shy. If you do have any questions, you can turn your mic on or your camera on. Okay, would you like to start working on the duet example? Yeah, we'll go for it. We'll do more. All right, so let me just put this in the chat. All right. There we go. Let's try the duet. So this time, oh, go back to my presentation. Uh, let watch the whole thing, and then I will work through it, and we can kind of do it together.
So take, it's about a minute, five seconds. So I will give you two minutes again, just watch the whole thing through. And take some notes and uh, cause we don't have too much time left. I'll help us work through this quickly. Victoria, do we have one hour or 90 minutes? Sorry, yes. 90? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I can relax. <laughs> I don't need to rush. Yeah. You, don't, no, okay. no, you don't need to rush. You can breathe. <laughs> I can breathe. Okay, I'm so used yeah. to being in and out. All right. Yeah, so take some time, watch the whole thing through. Come back and revisit hybrid one. I'll give you some extra time. I was in a panic thinking I was an hour. All right, let's try. So I will write in the time part. So as a coach, you know, take the time to do this. Hopefully once you do it once, you kind of have that. It's time consuming when we really wanna focus on number or base mark and declared difficulty uh, part. So this duet started their first part at nine seconds. And what did they do first? Was it a transition, a pair acro, or um, a hybrid? Good, transition. So we know we don't need to write anything else in that row. Then the next part they did from 14 to 31. And what part was this? What did they do next? Good, hybrid. And that would be element number one. Perfect. Have anyone want to have a guess or have established what the number of movements in time underwater is? It's a big one. Yeah, good. Good, Megan. That's exactly right. I had 33 movements and 18 seconds underwater. So that is a maximized base mark of 0.5 for this duet. It's the highest you can get. Okay, this one, uh, what did we see? Anyone want to have a go at the declared difficulty? What happened first? Good, there was, I definitely saw an R3. There is an R3 in there. There were a couple things that happened before. Okay, how about, there was an F1. So there was a rapid split, very, very quick. They went from any position, rapid split by one leg from any position. So they had an F1. And then there were a couple of things before the F3. Remember, any sort of turning gets credit. 
when you're do swirling or doing up and down actions. So for this duet, they actually had two R1s before the R3. I know R3s are super easy really to identify. Um, so this one, I have to admit, as someone who's been doing this for a while now, I did see um, they I would have given them credit as a coach for two R1s in there before their R3. And there was one last thing at the end that they did. It was very common in our solo too. Yeah, another, an airborne weight three. So for this solo, I'm kind of showing you what was in there, but because again, we can only declare two rotations from level one to four, I'm gonna have to take off an R1 because I wanna declare my R3. Now for this duet, we can start talking about another bonus, the angles bonus. Would you have, as a coach declare, do we think we can declare an angles bonus? And if so, which one? Did they have simple angles or complex? Good, simple, exactly. They showed me us, showed me the technical controller, <laughs> two simple, and Victoria, Victoria is a technical controller too. They showed us two simple angles in this. So remember, you have to show two different simple angles to get a bone, an angles bonus. I'll just move over and then no, nope, now I've got to do my DD. I'm going to see if someone else is faster at calculating than me. So we know the base mark is 0.5. It's the highest you can get. And then we know an F1 is 0 0.05. R1 is 0.15. R3 is 0.45. An airborne weight is 0.3. And our angle simple is 0 0.05. I get a 1.5 for this one. Simple angles. So Megan, in the angles, um, I did see two simple. So if you look in the addendum, and I don't have the routine open right now, but the simple angles would be any sort of leaning. It can be a V. That's one simple angle. I think they had that one in there. Um, or if they're angling backwards, sideways um, as well were angles in there. So they definitely had two different simple angles. Um, and if you have the addendum document, um, you will find that on those links from the beginning of the presentation, there's all sorts of pictures of different angles. So it makes it really, really easy to say, oh, I did that one and I did that one and I can, um, declare simple angles so the only thing that isn't an angle is if you do like a bent knee vertical that's not an angle um but say you're leaning backwards and like going over fishtail and coming down to a swirly you know that's a simple angle you are trying to get synchronized being on your heels together it's not like a typical it's not a 90 degree angle position that doesn't count either Okay, good job. Hopefully that helped a bit, Megan. Um, there's some good examples, though, that we have in the documents. All right, easy part again. We know they've got to come up and breathe after their hybrid, especially a long one like that. So the next section would be what? What part comes next? I know someone knows. Yes. Transition, good. Nothing else. And then the next part is a hybrid. So why don't you take a minute to go watch um, the next hybrid, just refresh, and then we will fill out the rest of this line. Yeah, so take a, a couple minutes again, two minute review of that hybrid so we can declare.
All right, 30 more seconds. Let's see if more of you can type in, don't be afraid. We're a nice small group. I feel like you're getting a private class in uh, coach carding. So don't be shy about trying. All right. Okay, hybrid. Second hybrid, second element. What do we think on base mark on this one? Here, I'm just going to. All right. Oh, let me scroll up. Megan had NM3 and T2. I definitely had T2. And I will say this one was right on the line. This was right on the um, borderline. So I had this at NM2, but Megan, um, it, it's close. It was 18 movements. And this was after me kind of analyzing and making sure, but NM3 was the best next guess. It truly was right on the line. So coaches, um, some advice is to make it um, clear on number of movements, um, which range you're going into. When you're right on the line, it is hard uh, when we're controlling. So um, through that hybrid, I would recommend watching it in slow motion and kind of the rules for declaring a hybrid. I would show the video, but it never works over Zoom to kind of show. So if you want to slow it down um, and look, remember that while you're rotating, you can't um, count extra actions. Like if you're rotating and doing your legs like this, you're just counting the halves and rotations are counted every half. Um, to go through it. So um, like I said, this one, it's hard working sometimes with old car choreography that is not as clear as to where it is. So, but for this one, um, it definitely was 18 movements through that. So see when you rewatch, if you can hit about 18 movements. And that's with synchronization errors too, thrown in there. So um, again, and we're not the actual coaches of this routine. So we're trying to do our best um, to be able to assume what they were trying to show us. All right, in declared difficulty, um, can you, what did you see in this? What did you, what would you have declared as the coach in that hybrid? I think you probably saw the two big ones that were, um, Again, probably are one of our most common declarations that we'll see. Yeah, there was an R1. There were actually two R1s to start. So recognize as coaches, when you're turning at least 180, you will get credit, even if it's very simple, even if it's Oh, say it was up and bent knee. I turned half and came down to a tuck. That's an R1. Just that very, very simple movement is R1. So there were two R1s and then there were two something else's in this second hybrid. There was not a thrust. Remember thrusts really have to be full thrusts, not kind of bend up and crash, but actual thrusts from um, a back pike. Anyone see? Not quite, kind of close. Not quite an airborne weight three. That is one of our common ones though. Maybe could have been an airborne weight three, but what I had is that there were two R3s in there, in that hybrid. But with two R3s, that means 
I don't want to declare my 0.15 R1s. I've got a 0.45 and a 0.45. So we're declaring two R3s in there. And then what about bonus? Did we see angles in this? And if we did, were they simple or complex? Yes, good. Yep, and another simple angles bonus. And then we can add up quickly our values. So we have a point two plus point nine point. So we are at a one point one five for this. All right, getting through to the final hybrid. So we know there was a teeny tiny little breath here, but they did take a breath. They did a body boost. So what part is this? All right, yeah, good. Transition, nothing else there. And then a quick little hybrid. So we know to put a number three, it was a third element. Now what we're seeing kind of a little more range here. So what uh, base mark would you give this one? Would you want to declare? Yeah, exactly. It was a quickie. So it was an NM1. It was five movements and it didn't uh, get over seven seconds. It was six point something. And it had one uh, hybrid uh, element in it, one difficulty that you would, yep, it was a T5, a thrust with a spin 360. It did not have any bonuses because that's all it was and it was straight. So we have a small DD here, a point zero five plus point zero five is point one for the base mark, and a T five is point four five. This one is a, a little zero point five hybrid. There we go. Good. Hopefully that's starting to make more sense. And then let's check our work. We've got an answer key. How did we do? Good job. All right. Okay, now we're gonna move on. We're gonna try a team example. Same thing, first lap of a team. And don't panic about the acrobatics. We will just write that an acrobatic happened and coding comes on Wednesday. So don't worry, <laughs> don't panic. Just know that it's an acrobatic. That's it at this stage today. So take a look, watch kind of the first three rows or the first three parts. So you'll see that there's an acro and there's a transition, there's a hybrid, and then we'll pause and do that chunk, do that section. I would have a, a question I, in the chat. Yes, Olga, you do have a bonus if the last hybrid at the actual end of the routine, but because this is like the first lap of each, we're not seeing a placement. But with the bonus, that placement bonus, you just have to make sure your hybrid begins in the last 20 seconds. So you can't say started at 25 seconds out and then it keeps going. It actually you have to take your breath and go right at that within that 20 seconds. Last, uh, perfect, good question.
just right in our times. Take two more minutes and then we will declare the first three rows. Team is the most complex to do. All right, one more minute. Okay. Let's start step by step. So at 15 seconds, so the team had their deck work when the music started, they dove in, and then the first part that appeared was what? Good, acro, good, yeah. Yeah, that was element number one for our free team. And in base mark, we would put, it was a platform that happened. So this is the furthest we're doing with Acro today. So we would put Acro P because it was a platform. And that is it. Here will be the Acro code. And you'll see that on the answer key as well as the DD. So this is the fun we're gonna have on Wednesday. I love doing Acro coding. So. I think that will be a good session on Wednesday. All right, after the acro, what part did the team do? What would you declare coaches? Good, transition, that's it. All right, what's the next part? Hybrid, good. And it would be element number two. We're following our appendix three and our set numbers. I will tell you, as you're seeing this right now, the time, the part, the element, that is what we're expecting judges to see on their screens. Judges don't need to know anything else about the difficulty, but they need to know what part is coming. All right, for this hybrid, who wants to give the base mark a go? What level? We know it's number of movements and time underwater, but what levels were they for their base mark? It's okay if it's just a guess. Okay, good, Megan. Your guess was perfect. Good. Yep, NM2. I had 19 movements and 12.5 seconds. So again, right on the borderline between a level two and level three, but I watched it and watched it and it definitely was a level two. 
Now, what difficulty did we see? I like this example because it has a cool one in it. So their first difficulty was what? What did they do? It was joined. So there's a hint. Good. It was a C. So you're on the right track. Everyone's on the right track. One leg back connection. But what else happened during that connection? Was it just stationary or did it move? And does that bump them up a level? Yes, it is a C5. Right? It was the one leg. You got that. But they were rotating. So it's a C5. Good. What came next? This one may be hard to see, but just put it out there. What did you see? What else did this team do? One thing was super evident. Yeah, there was an R3 in there. Now, what you probably noticed is also within that hybrid, there were four of them that had to turn 180 in that hybrid to get aligned with the others, which means there was an R1, which is factored by 0.5, because four of them did a swirl 180 or a turn 180 to get into the two lines. So they get credit. It's going to be teeny tiny as far as DD, but that did happen in that hybrid. So you can rewatch, you can look, you can see the four turn. It's actually a blind turn into pattern, but four of them had to turn to get in line with the others. I believe it was a 180. So that is an example of factoring. When only half the team does a movement, you still get credit for it. Um, and that is an example of that in this team. All right, what do we think about bonuses? Was there, let's start at the beginning. Was there traveling? Did the whole thing travel a meter or more? No, it did not. We did not have traveling, but we did have angles. What do you think? Simple or complex in this one? Good, Megan thought complex. I would say in this one, they just had simple this time. They weren't unbalanced. Um, it wasn't round actions. If you look at the angle photos in some videos are in that addendum document. So, you know, sometimes we may think they look complex, but they actually are by definition in the difficulty guide, um, simple. So for this one, it was simple angles. And that, oh, and then there was also, I need to get, now this is the harder one, the synchronization. Was this hybrid fully synchronized or part synchronization? No, that's a one you may need to read up in the difficulty guide. Synchronization can be a bit complicated, but full synchronization means everything was identical, the whole hybrid, except for three movements. Pure mirrored actions are allowed. So this one, while it seems like it may have been full, was part, because when they were doing that um, partner connection, they were ticking like this. So that wasn't, if they would have been mirrored, mirrored would be something like this or this, but because they were opposite, we're at part synchronization for this hybrid. Uh, were there pattern changes? Did everyone see that this first hybrid had a couple pattern changes in it? Yes, good. Now. Because they were both blind, I was seeing two pattern changes complex. So I saw two. Remember, they did the rotation, but the swimmers kind of ended up in their same spots. Uh, but they did otherwise have two, 
too blind going um, into that. So you may want to relook. Pattern changes can be as well with teams. Some are really younger teams are really easy. I mean, this is a team um, that competed at Junior World. Some of these are a little more complicated. Um, and some of their other pattern changes are very simple. Um, but this one, um, because of the turning action joined back to back, they are completely blind. So they were blind um, turning into the two lines as well on that. So that is the rationale for that one. And let's see how they did in DD. So we know it's 0.2 for our base mark my c5 c5 is point 0.3 r1 times point 0.5 is a point 0.075 and an r3 we know is point 0.45 simple angles point 0.05 part synchro 0.1 and then two complex pattern changes are plus 0.3 plus 0.3 equals I get 1.775 on that and again I can't reiterate enough how it is more challenging to watch old choreography but I know we are all waiting for the new routines it, it is easier to declare I can tell you that coaches are really trying to show you uh, what they are doing as far as difficulty. All right, so that was the first hybrid. Then what came next? Or do we need to rewatch? But I think it's a pretty big, pretty obvious. What do we usually do after a hybrid? Yeah, it's another transition. So why don't you take a minute, quick minute, because now we truly are six minutes left um, to look at the last part. So there's a hybrid, a transition, and then one more thing after that. So I set my timer for one minute, take a quick look at that hybrid, focus on looking at the difficulty in there. All right, let's give it a go. Try and finish this coach card. Ooh, we can do the uh, parts here. So what part was after this transition? Was it a hybrid or an acro? Yeah, good job, Megan. Hybrid. That was element number three. Any guesses on base mark for this one? From anyone? Yep, that's it. Good. Good, Ophelia. Good, Megan. It was. It was an NM2. I had 15 movements and 10 seconds underwater. All right. Now, declare difficulty. What did you see? Everything. Throw everything at me. It can be declared or bonuses, whatever you saw. Just put it out there. Don't be afraid. 
If you were the coach, what would you want to declare? Yeah, there are definitely some angles. There was definitely an R3. It was definitely synchro partial. What else? Anything else in difficulty? Was there one R3 or more than one R3? Yeah, there was a pattern change. Good. It was, and actually, you know, Tammy, it was an airborne weight three. Um, yeah, right before the end, but it actually, because it was a spin ascending, what do you think has the higher DD an airborne weight three or the spin ascending? So not that an airborne weight three is wrong. Tammy is right. There was an airborne weight three because they were rising, but they were spinning up. So Tammy, yeah, Tammy and I are coaching together. I'm like, hey, Tammy, maybe we, we do an R3 and an R3 because we want to get the 0.45 on that. And I will add at the very beginning, um, half of the athletes did the um, uh, one leg, an airborne weight one. So they did an airborne weight one times 0.5. So Ophelia, I see what you mean about um, maybe a rapid split. I did not have them as a rapid split. I don't think they actually hit a full split position on that. But I will recheck. But that was something. They definitely had an airborne weight one there. So an airborne weight one and an R3 and an R3. Oop, and let me check our bonuses. There were definitely angles. It is either simple. It may have been complex, but I will leave it as simple now because that's not wrong either. Um, definitely partial synchro. And you're right, there was one pattern change simple that they did. And uh, we will just keep going because we're at the time. So we'll see the DD. And then just quickly to finish it off, what came after the hybrid? Super simple. They did same as the a duet. They one, one second. They did one quick body boost, so that was a transition. And did anyone watch to the end? What was the last thing we had in this routine? Yeah, it was an acro. So that's element number four, and it is an airborne one. So the base mark is there. And acro code plus DD. We will work on that on the next session. So that is it. All right, I will open, I'll truly open it up now if anyone has any quick questions as we kind of conclude, but yay, we got through all three quickly, but you will get this, you will get the PDF, you can work it through on your own. I'm definitely gonna double check that I didn't miss a split in the, a rapid split in that figure, that last one. I hope this helped you. I truly do a little bit to give you a sense of doing the coach card. You'll be able to rewatch if any of you speak Spanish, you can do it again with Lara. Good, I hope that was uh, very helpful. And you know, just to reach out if you have questions, think about it, try it. And then we're seeing everyone for a Q and A in January. Olga. Yeah, I have two questions actually. So if the coach make mistake, <laughs> like put it on the card, uh, like, I don't know, I'm just afraid to make mistakes. So what is it, what is it gonna be? Yes, so, you know, one of the things I'm recommending and what we're doing in Canada for our first Canadian competition 
is we are having coaches do their, like it's kind of mandatory now, coaches, you have to do your coach card, but as you know, technical controllers um, really haven't had a competition to control that yet. So at our first competition, so to work everyone into this new system, um, we are going to fix coach cards. We are gonna work with coaches before they submit. And at this one first competition we ever do with the new system, we are going to allow technical controllers to change the coach card so we aren't hurting the athletes. So we aren't hurt penalizing the athletes because exactly like you just said it, everyone's afraid to make a mistake. Um, we will still have penalties if you do a tech required element wrong, because I think everyone understands that's normal. But for the sake of the coach card, um, the tech controllers are going to help. We're really going to support everyone. So I highly encourage all federations to think about this in a supportive way. Our coaches then know they get a corrected coach card, but then for our national championships, it's all in it's, it's will be. So for example, um, in this coach card, let's just say you declared an R4 instead of an R3, like one extra spin. It would go to base mark. If you did an R3 instead of an R4, it goes to the base mark, the whole hybrid or just this element. Yes. The whole hybrid. Yes. So but at this the opposite so if i put like a three or something and then the judges uh, someone see the more than that so it, then you, it doesn't go you may be in the safe zone if you do more so say you declared um uh, what am i trying to say you did more than declared so say you declared an r3 but you did an r4 you're fine because you would have done the r3 i would have seen you spin 360 so i'm like did what they declared yeah Thank I don't you. care that you did more. You're, you're okay that way. But yeah. But we still say do what you declare, teach your athletes to do what is choreographed to the routine. And if federations can support one meet with a little bit of leeway and kind of fixing some things, then I think everyone will feel more confident and start to have, you know, have a positive first experience with the new system. And then hopefully by your national championships, you're ready to roll and it is full in. So mistakes would have to be accounted for as per the rules. But that's the way we're strategizing here. I just wanted to share. Erica is an expert too. Call us <laughs> if you need help on that. So I have one quick question more about the solar. So because we all know that the solar, um, sometimes they don't have counts at all, right? So, and they can finish their hybrid a little early or a little later. Uh, later is fine but early is not because I would put some seconds there and the girl or boy make mistakes. So it's going to cost them like a lot of, so it's kind so, of a lot of on their shoulders, some little kids. Yeah. So if there's no mistakes in their declared difficulty, like, you know, they did the spin down, they were supposed to, they're fine. If it's their base mark, like you said, they maybe forgot some little extra movements or they came up faster than they usually do we can change the base mark with no penalty to the swimmer. The tech controllers are allowed because that has to be in their score. We need to ensure. So, and that's in the rules that the base mark can be adjusted by the tech controllers without penalty. And if they finish a little bit later than the music again? No, that's not, that's not even, no, that's no problem. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. The bigger mistakes are like the declared difficulty, like, you know, when it gets really for real, for real. But that's why I've mentioned reach out to a tech controller, have them, you know, scan your coach card, watch a video, be like, great, I saw everything you declared or, oh, you know, that's a little bit, you know, unclear to me. What was that? You know, can you make that a little more clear? Can you hold that a little bit longer? Um, to kind of um, give you some feedback. And like I said, we're training more and more tech controllers. I know Victoria's working on Pan Am. Everyone must have gotten the notice about uh, Pan Am starting in the new year, which is exciting. Okay, no more questions for Kara. I think it's okay. So Kara, thank you so much. You are amazing. You are so clear, but remember you have um, study and reread re all that material. It's so important to do like that. And we hope to see you soon for the art positions. 
So, and if you have more questions, write, and we have a spot for questions and answer next January. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cara. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.